show at 617. I'm your host, Lance Roberts. Brent Clinton, our executive producer this morning. And of course, uh, just for the break, we're talking a little bit about portfolio management and, and, and what's happening with the markets and, and relating it back to something that we kind of can all kind of, uh, you know, kind of link to, which is, is gardening. And so I brought in a specialist, Farmer Bob. Uh, sorry, Danny Ratliff, CFP. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Man, you do not want to see my garden at home. We had to pull that thing out. And why is that? What happened? You don't have time to weed. I mean, it's, it's terrible. <laughs> Those things will overtake the garden in a matter of seconds. We had these awesome two 25-foot-long gardens, and we moved in this place like, this is going to be great. But you literally have to maintain it every single day. Kind of like a portfolio. Kind of like a portfolio. <laughs> exactly like a portfolio. See? And that's what happened. And since we're doing that, had no time for to weed an actual garden. There you go. And that's exactly the point. And if you don't weed, the weed, it's, it's amazing what weeds will do. If you, you literally don't pay attention to a garden, it will disappear. It will just become your backyard again. That's exactly right. And then <laughs> so, the weeds will take over your lawn. I mean, it's... it's yeah, it's a bad effect. So, uh, by the way, we have a uh, seminar coming up in our office. It's this Saturday at what time? 9 a.m. So 9, 9 o'clock this Saturday, and we're actually going to feed you breakfast. Um, and there's only about five seats left. We're almost full. So if you want to get by the website, you can go by riaadvisors.com or either realinvestmentadvice.com, either one. Uh, but if you want to come in and we're cover- what, and it's recover- uh, covering retirement right lane. This is our larger, mo- more comprehensive. This is our retirement right lane. It's going to cover Medicare, Social Security, housing and retirement, portfolio management, markets like this, uh, financial planning, myths. We're going to cover quite a bit of information. And I'll tell you what, I think one thing that speaks volumes of these classes is we have a lot of people who return. Mm-hmm. So we're covering all kinds of different information. So Are they just please. coming back for the free kolaches, though? I mean, hey, really. man, rumor has it. We may we may be having something special this week for breakfast. So I don't know. Don't hold your breath. But if uh, if Frank shows up, we're going to be in good shape. <laughs> OK, so it's all up to Frank. It's up to Frank. Frank, Frank you're Frank, listening. Yeah, Frank's another uh, certified financial planner in our office. And uh, his wife is an excellent cook. So, well, I think I think he's talking about Hertz Donuts. But have you been to Hertz Donuts? No, but I really want to get the guy who comes to Speedo to come visit Connie. <laughs> So if you're not familiar with Hertz Donuts, Hertz Donuts is the shop. Um, I know there's one out in Katy. There's actually one by my house. I'm, I, and they have other locations. I'm not sure where they are. But they have the craziest donuts you can ever imagine. They have the Scooby-Doo donut. They have a, a donut after Homer Simpson, which is this <laughs> massive donut that looks like Homer Simpson on the top of it. So, I mean, it's just talk about it's basically all 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 Hertz Donuts is is a donut with all kinds of crap on the top of it. So, you know, if you like, if you like, you know, icing and, and other stuff, Hertz Donuts is the place to go. Well, Frank, the bar has just been risen. So, hey, <laughs> I just, he's giving me a thumbs yeah, up. I just saw him, yeah. Um, anyway, so uh, coming up uh, this Saturday, we're going to cover that. That starts at 9 o'clock. Uh, again, seating is limited because it's in our office, and you can come by and see our studio and everything else that we've got going on here. Um, but get by the website, riaadvisors.com or realinvestmentadvice.com. Uh, but don't worry if you miss this one. We have it on a regular basis, so we'll, we we do. We actually have another Saturday. one. We we have another one coming up on four twenty four. Lunch and learn ten financial planning rules that drive financial success. That's another one that seems to fill up fairly quickly. This month is National Financial Literacy Month, so we're doing a lot of these, and we do these you know continuously a couple times each month. And financial literacy is important. Uh, poll after poll has come out lately that. Um, out of 10 financial questions, and we're talking about very simple financial questions like what's a joint account, um, those type of things, that almost 80% of people fail basic financial literacy. What's a mutual fund? What's a stock? What's, you know, what's a bond? You know, very simple questions that really, you know, as individuals, and particularly as individuals investing in 401k plans and IRAs, should really take some time to understand because again the biggest problem that people get into is investing in things they don't really understand and then they don't understand why they lose money because they're told that oh just simply just put your money in this and leave it alone and it's like a garden it'll just grow up and 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 you know give you fruit down the road but the problem is is that more often than not the weeds overtake it well that's right even with these target date funds you know unfortunately you think somebody's tending the garden and typically they're doing it very very sparingly a little mm-hmm. bit at a time and so it's not always what we think it is and so with it being national literacy month national retirement planning week i mean i think these are 
big things. Uh, you know, come in, ask questions. It's very open format. We love we love questions. Keeps us on our toes. But we find that so often there's lots of times that we underestimate a lot of things in retirement. Mm-hmm. We underestimate how much money we're going to spend. We underestimate inflation. We underestimate health care or Medicare right. or misinterpret a lot of this information. So we like to spend a lot of time covering well, those types of things. You know, and, and Richard Rosso, um, your partner in crime that will be there on, on Saturday, is he just wrote an article out today. It's on our website. So if you go to realinvestmentadvice.com, it's called Your Health Care in Retirement. And it's, a, it's actually a very interesting read because he's going through the aspects of health care and retirement and what we need to be planning for. And it's it, when you start thinking about how much money you're going to spend in retirement, when, you're talking, when you start talking about three hundred, three hundred and fifty thousand dollars on healthcare and retirement, you know it's, it's very interesting. And one of the lines that really stuck out to me in in his article today, which again it's on the website, realinvestmentadvice.com, if you want to read it, is that he's talking about having conversations with your children about being caregivers in the future. And I've got four kids. And my wife and I have already planned we're just going to live 30 days with each one of them and just, you know, move around. But, you know, but it really, though, we don't really pay enough attention to the risks that we're potentially putting on our children down the road. You know, one of the things that's going on today as we speak is people that are between the ages of 35 and, and 50 have become this sandwich generation where they're having to take care of both their parents and their kids. And in some cases, their kids' kids, uh, depending on how that's right. how fast it's happening. But you know, there's they're taking these multiple these multiple generational families are now starting to have to come together and support each other. Well, and the problem is only going to get worse as modern technology and medicine gets better and better. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think we talked about it last week. The they're going to be eight times the amount of people who live to 100 in 2050 than there are today. So, so simply, what you're saying is we should adopt Logan's Run, possibly. Do you, do you need, have you ever seen that movie? I have. You yeah, have really years and years. Most ago. most people have not seen that movie. It, well, so that green is people. So <laughs> you're just saying. <laughs> Problem solved. <laughs> but if you don't know the movie in Logan's Run, uh, at the age of 35, you are you leave the colony and you go up to, you know, whatever is up there, right? The great place. And everybody's all excited about this. What they're actually doing is killing you at 35 because they can't support the older population, yeah. right? And, you know, and when you start talking about the aging problem and the number of baby boomers, uh, interesting issue in the employment report that just came out, right? We just had this employment report, 196,000 jobs created. It's all seasonal adjustments um, that created that 196,000 jobs. But everybody was talking about the labor force participation rate, which ticked up, right? So more people coming back in the labor force. The only aspect of the labor force participation rate that ticked up, people 55 years and older. That was where your labor force participation rate picked up. So in other words, pe- more people over the age of 55, and especially talking about over the age of 65, are going. we have more people over the age of 65 now in the labor force than at any point in history going back to 1940. So, Well, it's it, something that makes sense because we do see a lot of people who, there are still people getting severance packages. They're being yeah. let go. And a lot of times they may sit out for a while and say, eh, you know what, I'm going to get back in, in the job market. And so I think that number is, is something that, you know, we're probably going to continue to see, mm-hmm. and that that'll probably unfortunately continue to tick up. Well, and there's two, there's a, there's a dark side to this too, because supposedly what's supposed to happen is that we're supposed to retire as baby boomers, and when we retire as baby boomers, then the next generation comes up and takes our job. The problem is, is that us old people aren't retiring, and so the baby the the millennials that are coming up can't find the jobs because we're not leaving them. <laughs> so, you know, and that's that's creating this kind of this flux in the labor market where. You know, we've got this older generation, and, and they're working, and to your point, they're working because we feel better. Our health care is better. We are living longer. Um, we don't need to retire at 65. We can retire at 70 or 75 because, yep. you know, we're still feeling good, right? And if we take care of ourselves, you know, to, to any degree at all, we can work a lot longer than, than uh, we, have, we have in the past. And that's creating a very interesting dynamic in the labor market because it's changing the structure of how jobs are supposed to turn over. Yeah, and so that that's probably a trend that we will continue to see because just like you mentioned, it's going to be uh, people are living longer, and the healthcare aspect of it is is going to hopefully only get better. Yeah. Well, they they just had a study out the other day that children being born today will live to be 150 years old. See, that is amazing because of, and scary. Yeah, and, and scary, but because of technology and healthcare, medicine, etc. So, how do you plan for long term care in that environment, right? <laughs> I mean, well, it's gonna you know it's gonna be a really interesting burden on you know healthcare companies down the road 
which is the extent of life and, and how long we're living is going to create bigger and bigger drags on, you know, providing health care, health care provision, et cetera. And the cost of health care are going to keep going up. Well, they're even talking about life insurance companies putting in provisions or riders in, in new plans that are actually going to provide for some catastrophic type of uh, treatments. So if you had cancer or other types mm -hmm. of uh, ailments, that they would actually go out and instead of giving you the death benefit, they may go ahead and speed that up. So like some of these plans will have a chronic illness rider, for instance, right. where if you're diagnosed with a chronic illness, they're going to go ahead and speed up a portion of that death benefit so you can use that in the remainder of your life or for care. They're now talking, there, there's lots of talk about them coming out and saying, okay, instead of just doing that, we're going to go out and try to treat the problem to make the, to hopefully extend somebody's life even longer. Interesting. And so it'll be interesting to see how the insurance industry kind of navigates these roads, especially as people live longer and longer, because, you know, the odds on a term policy, for instance, especially, mm -hmm. the odds are on the insurance company's side. Right. Right, that you're going to outlive that, that policy, but all of a sudden it may not be. Um, so... We'll see what happens. This is something that we're watching well, closely. You know, and, and talking about that, you know, one of the things that we, we have talked about before is, you know, there is this whole push in the industry to, you know, buy term. And supposedly what you're supposed to do is buy term insurance and invest the difference. And yep. then when your term insurance expires, well, you've got plenty of money saved up. You're now effectively self-insured. The problem is, is that people buy term, they never invest the difference. But you know, now there's because they're coming out with these hybrid policies that are now convertible term. Correct. That you can convert from, you can buy term to start with. It's cheap while it's while you're early in life, but then when you get close to the expiration of that term policy, you can convert it into whole life policy. That's exactly right. We're seeing more and more people do that while you're low on cash flow. Utilize something like that. Make sure you know the convertibility uh, provisions. How exactly that works. Work with somebody who understands mm -hmm. how these uh, how to read these contracts. Because right. they're big yeah. and there's a lot of information in there. And so that's typically what we see is that uh, there's a lot of information that may or may not be told correctly. Yeah. Uh, of course, Danny, our certified financial planner here in the office, talking about our upcoming seminar this weekend. We come back, we've got to talk about the IMF downgrading our growth. Um, you know, on a global basis, what does that mean for the U.S.? And also, what does it mean for the markets and your money? Also, get by Apple or Google Play Store. Download our financial health app today. It's called My Worth and uh, simply will help you manage your money better. Be right back. Want a longer talk with Lance about your money? Request a personal one-on-one -on -one at LanceRobertsShow.com.